right in here. You can see there's more suspension travel than there is ground clearance on this bike. The application for the Kove for the vast majority of people that are going to be riding a Kove is not rally racing. Honestly, it'll be adventure or dual sport. We've got the suspension apart. Here are the mid valves. And if you know anything about suspension, you know that there is no float. Just remove the stock shock, put in a shock from Tractive. Here's the mid valve here. This is compression. It's a little bit funny. There's a, there's a crossover here. That's a little bit odd for a mid valve. I'm definitely gonna remove that. That should technically make it stiffer, but what I'm gonna do is add a couple of tiny shims right here, and that'll move the whole stack away and give me some more float. First impression, riding the Kove. This bike is pretty sweet. I have a lot of travel. It's not actually bottoming out for me, but I am noticing that the bike itself is bottoming out. So if you wanted to come take a look, I could show you where it's bottoming out. Right in here, you can see there's more suspension travel than there is ground clearance on this bike, which I personally think is actually a bit of a positive because we can use that bottom part of the stroke to get it really nice and stiff for bigger hits if we were to get that far down into the travel. Instead of just bottoming out completely, at least you've still got some shock there to, to absorb. Okay, so we're gonna head into the shop, outfit this bike with aftermarket suspension front and rear, and then we're gonna come back to you and show you the difference. This is Laurie from Outback Motor Tech, and I'm here with Chuck. Hey, I'm Chuck from True Tech. The Cove 450 rally that we have, which is a built project, it's gone through quite a bit of uh, modifications. And the next on the list is the suspension. So I'm here with Chuck, who doesn't call himself an expert in suspension, but he's pretty darn good in my opinion. So I'm going to let him explain a few things about what he has done to the bike and what the experience he has with the OEM setup is. So there you go. So I've spent a fair bit of time riding, several days riding the Cove. Uh, I personally really like the Kove. I'm an enduro racer. I'm an intermediate enduro racer. Um, so that may tell you some of the things about my personal preferences when it comes to suspension. I even found the Kove was a little bit on the stiff side for myself. The thing to understand about suspension in general, but the Kove is that the Kove is built specifically for rally racing, for expert racers and expert racers require stiff suspension so that they're not bottoming out all over the place. And that's exactly what the Kove is built for. The application for the Kove in North America, or where we are, and for the vast majority of people that are gonna be riding a Kove is not rally racing. Mostly, honestly, it'll be adventure or dual sport. And basically to make the bike more suited for adventure and dual sport. We need to soften the suspension. And as soon as I installed the tractive rear shock, I noticed that the suspension was, I didn't even take it off the bench and I noticed that it was a lot softer. Just remove the stock shock and put in a shock from, put in a shock from tractive. Which is great. So I just basically valved the forks to suit what the rear shock felt like. And after testing, test riding it, uh, I'm very happy with it, and it's it's quite a typical soft enduro setup. These Kobe's are known for being pretty stiff, so now I'm going to take the forks off and do some revalving to make them plush like the rear. I basically just opened up the mid valve. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with suspension tuning, you'll know what mid valve float is. So we've got the suspension apart. Here are the mid valves, and if you know anything about suspension, you know that there is no float here. And this fork basically had no mid valve float and I, I set it to 1.5 millimeters for those of you that care. And I softened, I just softened everything. So here's the mid valve here. This is compression. It's a little bit funny. There's a, there's a crossover here. That's a little bit odd for a mid valve. I'm definitely going to remove that. That should technically make it stiffer, but what I'm going to do is add a couple of tiny shims right here and that'll move the whole stack away and give me some more float. Basically, the goal is to make it so that when you hit a root or a pothole or washboards, you don't feel it in your wrists anymore. The bike stays steady and just tracks wherever you want it to go. Because I really did feel it a lot of times 
my wrist, you know, now is going to thank you. They're, they're going to thank you a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so stiff. It's incredible how stiff it was. It's basically like the difference between a motocross setup and an enduro setup. It was not, uh, it was not a very, you know, I didn't do anything atypical. I just did what I normally do when I'm softening suspension, a little bit more float, uh, take a few shims out of the compression stack. Yeah, I just added some float. I took away some compression shims. The preload on the springs was at 15 millimeters, which is a little excessive by any standard. So I dropped that down to five millimeters and that's gonna help with compliance a little bit too. But yeah, basically I'm taking a racing setup and making it good for dual sport and adventure. How about the, the OEM setup? Is it, is, it, uh, is it pretty good out of the box? And is it, is, it adjust, is it adjustable to like the adventure dual sport riding standards or? Well, I guess those are, that's two questions. Is it good? It's good, yes. Uh, the components are basically show and knockoffs. Um, so it's, by any standard, it's modern suspension. But the, the, the components are, are good quality, but you're not gonna be able to get enough adjustment out of it. The, you can only do so much with clickers, and what you can do with clickers isn't anywhere close to getting the suspension to an ADV or dual sport setup, not even close. So having having like rear shock like the the one we have now attractive, that's 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 an improvement. That's the right direction for for overland ADV riding. Absolutely, I have no previous experience with the tractive shock, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But after riding the bike and uh, playing with it a little bit, I I think that they hit the nail on the head. Um, it, it's softer, but it has good bottoming resistance, which that's that's the best that you can ask for. I. When I tested it, I rode it in the woods some. There's like, you know, there's a section here with some good four inch angled roots and some tight turns and some hills and some rocks and it just eats everything up. And I went down the gravel road, blasting as fast as I could um, and hitting potholes as non-gracefully as possible. And it's doing exactly what I would want with a dual sport bike. So now for, for short riders like myself, now I find, I thought you actually lowered the bike, but now it has a, what, what, what's changed now? Uh, it just has a little bit more sag. Um, basically, I, I don't know what the spring rate of the tractive shock is compared to the OEM one, but everything is softer. And I did take some preload out of the springs and the bike seems to be balanced pretty well. You might want to adjust the, uh, the sag and the preload on the spring, uh, but you won't know that until you're until you ride it. Now, when I rode it, I felt it, the bike felt very stable. It didn't feel like it was doing anything funny. But I've only spent you know 20 minutes riding it, so it it probably overall it does feel a little bit lower, especially when you sit on it. It will have a little bit more sag than it did before, and this and the whole setup is softer, so. For me, yeah, because initially the idea was to lower the bike, but it's, it looks like it's not needed anymore. Yeah, not for myself anyway. Yeah, I mean you'll know once once you ride it a little bit more. I, it's still a tall bike, mm -hmm. but allowing it to sag a little bit more uh, will will make it. It's all part of having it be more compliant for dual sport and adventure riding. So, so now with the tractive rear shock and the LV in front end. Is it in balance or was it, was it hard to put it into balance? No, um, like I say, I haven't spent enough time riding it to say that it's like super dialed, but the time that I spent riding it and what I can feel on the bench and what I can see in the suspension, it seems like it's gonna be very close. It, if you need to adjust anything, it will be just, I mean, you can adjust clickers. You might want to adjust clickers uh, for your, you know, depending on where you're riding. But the first thing that I always do is see how the bike turns and off like just with the little bit that I've ridden it, it seems to be turning quite well. If it knifes in, if it's oversteering, then you want to lift the front end up a little bit, drop the rear end down and you can do that. The tractive shock has external, like it's an easy hydraulic adjustment. So you can adjust the balance of the bike. And if the bike is drifting to the outside of corners or understeering, then you want to raise the back end up or drop the front end down 
So those would be the main adjustments. And the clickers, I mean, you can fine tune with the clickers if you want. The, the next thing I was going to ask you is because it's quite an advanced system here. Can you tell me a bit more about this and, and why they're good? Yeah, it's less complicated than it seems. You have all of these adjustments on the, on the stock shock as well. But basically, this is a hydraulic preload adjuster. So you don't have to get in to adjust the preload or the sag with a wrench. So you can just do it just by, you know, just by turning this. And these are just your compression clickers. Yeah, so, so these are just typical compression adjusters. You have high speed and low speed. They're labeled down here. Rebound is down here where it typically is on most shocks. The important thing to remember with high and low speed adjustment is that it's not about how fast the bike is traveling, it's about how fast the shaft is being compressed into the shock. So an example of high speed compression damping would be braking bumps or washboards. The suspension is moving really quickly, so that's a high speed adjustment. So if you're having trouble on washboards, then you wanna back out your high speed compression clicker and that's going to allow the suspension to move easier. If, you're, if you want it stiffer on stuff like that, then you wanna turn it in. An example of low speed is something like in a corner or going through a G out where the suspension is moving relatively slowly. So you have two circuits to adjust there and then one on the rebound down there. I am super happy with the suspension. The preload feels good. The valving on the forks is now plush, but it holds up. It matches the rear really well. This is an awesome upgrade for this bike. What's up guys, it's Sam King here with Outback Motor Tech. This is my second ride on the Kobe 450. We've just got this bike back from Chuck at True Tech Motorcycle Specialist to talk a little bit about how it felt before and after. The before feeling was very harsh on top of the stroke. So just small rocks, roots, bumps. You're gonna feel a lot of deflection, just a very kind of a harsh feeling, a little bit uncomfortable. So, after getting the bike back from Chuck, I've noticed a big difference in a positive way. The plushness of the bike has come alive. So small bumps, small rocks, small roots. It's not even there. It's like you're just riding a couch. This thing's like a cloud. Just absorbs all that stuff very easily, which gives you a lot of confidence because your handling's better, your comfort is much better let's be real this bike was set up for your average sunday battler you know dual sport riding you're not really going to go race this thing at the dakar or an erzberg it's a little bit too soft still in the bottom of the stroke chuck you've done a great job this bike handles a lot better after your uh, revalving your spring setup and the sag setup is much better so let's dissect this a little bit, starting with the rear shock, the tractive rear shock here. Uh, you've got a lot more adjustability here now with your high speed and low speed. Let's uh, talk about the positives that we're feeling with this shock. I'm finding that it has really good hold up, so it's sitting in a really nice position in the stroke where I can feel it's applying pressure to the ground, giving me a really nice stable feeling to get really nice traction when I'm just kind of riding more mellow trail that still can push second third gear and be trying to go a little bit faster anything past third fourth gear on the bigger bumps that's where you're going to start to just notice that the, the suspension travels a little bit too much next talking about the characteristics of the fork again the hold up and the neutral position of the fork now is a lot better so riding your single track and double wide track. It's feeling really nice and planted and got really nice pressure going to that front wheel to make you feel very stable in your corners. Once it starts to get about halfway through the stroke, it's just a little bit soft for your more aggressive rider. For your average Sunday rider, it's a great setup. So good job, Chuck. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video with the, our transformation of the Kobe 450. We're very excited to sh bring to you our next video, which will be the transformation of the CF Moto Ibex slash MT 450. 
very pumped to show you guys what we're working on there. So give us a subscribe, stick around and check out the action.